This video is sponsored by ZZZ Projects, but more on them later. If you are an entity framework developer and you ever found yourself setting up a data insertion algorithm, you know how slow and inefficient this can be. But what if it doesn't have to be this way? This is where bulk insertion comes in. In today's video, we will build an entity framework core application, and then we're going to use some advanced techniques to get the most out of our databases. Along the way, you will learn about a great tool about to half our execution time even further. Want to know more? Then let's get to it. When dealing with extensive data sets, traditional data insertion methods in Entity Framework can hit a wall. These methods often have inefficiencies leading to longer execution times and higher resource consumption. Let's just take a quick look at this right here. A basic application that doesn't do much more than write a few thousand lines into a local database. I mean, something so simple shouldn't take that long, right? Oh well. Would you look at that, a whole 10 seconds to run this. And now please tell me how to optimize this. There are hardly any lines of code. What if we did a few changes here and let this little inserter run as well? Same insertion, half the time. And no effort whatsoever from our side. I mean, if that isn't worth it, I don't know what is. What you just saw easily half our execution time was the bulk insert tool from the Entity Framework Extensions library. This tool is designed to optimize database operations significantly and with minimal effort. And yes, we will look at this tool in today's video as well. It has made our lives way too easy since we discovered it. And by the way, bulk insertion isn't the only tool available. There are many more where this comes from, and we plan to cover them all in a future video. So maybe subscribe to not miss it? For today though, we will go deep into learning about data insertion for Entity Framework Core applications and learn how to accomplish this in the most efficient way possible. And for that, we won't just be talking about them, we will use this opportunity to develop a small application dedicated to handling data operations with a local database. We'll be using Entity Framework Core, SQLite and obviously the bulk insertion tool. By the way, although we will be using SQLite for today's video, you should be able to follow along with most of what we will be doing today, even if you use SQL Server, MySQL, PostgreSQL, or even Oracle. You will more likely than not get even better performance out of it if you use a solution other than SQLite. However, remember that you need to set up your server before you start, which is why we use SQLite here which is pretty easy to work with. And we want to make this video as focused and short as possible. That's why we're really focusing on these parts. Also, in our next video, we will use the same app to add further functionality to it. So make sure to follow along and build it yourself so that you can follow along with us in the next video as well. So let's get started then. All right, first things first, make sure you have the latest version of Visual Studio and .NET 8 installed. If you already have Visual Studio installed, open up the Visual Studio installer as we will be getting the latest version installed now. If not, make sure to go ahead to the official website and get the installer downloaded for your operating system. With the installer now open, go to the Installs tab. Here you can see your current installed version. If this is version 17.8 or later, then you're good to go. If not, go ahead and move to the Available tab there you should see either a newer stable release or a preview for 17.8. Get that installed with all the necessary components, like the .NET desktop development workload and any other .NET versions you might want to have installed, and then launch. Once you are in the launcher, we get to start the project creation process. So click on New Console App, set your project name and location. If you want, set the location to be the same place Make sure to select .NET 8 here and you could keep the rest pretty much the same and then click create. There we go. Now that we are ready to go, let's get the necessary libraries installed. So go up to here, project, manage new get packages. Okay, now search for SQLite. This is what we're going to be using in our video today as it's essentially the same as normal database development, but greatly simplifies the boring sections. That should allow us to get into the fun part much sooner. All right, next we will need the Entity Framework Core Library. So search for that and install the latest version as well. That should be version eight or later for you. And while we're here, let's get the star of our show, the Z Entity Framework Extension Package. Get the latest version as well. 
It should be 8.1 or later. And that would be it for the preparation. Good, now on to the development. So what are we making today? Well, our main goal for this application is to try out the various data insertion options that we have to manage data transfers to a local database. Our main focus for this will be on efficiency, as that is most of the time the main concern. So we will be keeping an eye on execution time for every method we will be using. Sounds good? Then let's start building the core components of our Entity Framework core application. We'll begin by setting up the database context and then define our entity class. Let's create a class named AppDBContext. This class will inherit from dbContext, which is a part of the Entity Framework core library. In this class, we define two properties for the type DB set. Each DB set will represent a table in our database. We have a DB set for customer and another for order. These DB set properties are crucial as they are used by Entity Framework to query and save instances of our entities. The onConfiguring method is where we configure our database connection. Here, we're telling Entity Framework to use SQLite as our database provider. The connection string data source equal local db.db specifies the name of our SQL database file. Now, let's define our entities customer and order. These classes represent the data that we'll be storing in our database. The customer has two properties, ID and name. The ID property will serve as the primary key in our database table. Entity Framework Core will automatically recognize this property as the primary key because of its name, ID or class name ID. The order class represents an order placed by a customer. It includes an ID property, which is the primary key, details about the order and a customer ID that acts as a foreign key linking the order to a customer. And here the customer property is a navigation property that Entity Framework uses to automatically handle the relationship between customers and orders. Perfect. With our database context and entities in place, we're ready to move on to the program CS class. This is where we'll implement our data insertion methods and compare the performance. We'll start by creating a method for a basic bulk insertion operation. Then we'll explore more advanced scenarios, including bulk inserts with options and handling related entities. Let's head over to the program CS file to start implementing these methods. Here's how to do it. First, define a method named bulk insert demo in your program class. This method will not return anything and will not take any parameters. Inside this method, create a list of customer objects. Use a loop to add multiple customer objects to this list. Each customer should have a unique name, which you can ensure by incorporating the loop index into the name. Now, before we get to the main part, let's make sure the database gets created here. This, as you can see here, does simply what it says. It ensures that we start our operations with a ready-to-go database. This should avoid issues and possible errors later on. Also, since we are going to run this several times and we want both tests to be on equal terms, let's make sure to delete the database before this too, in case there is one already created from the previous run. All right, next you'll need to measure the time it takes to insert these customers into the database. To do this, create a stopwatch instance and start it just before the bulk insert operation. Use a using block to create a new instance of AppDBContext. Inside this block, call the bulk insert method from the entity framework extensions, passing in your list of customers. Stop the stopwatch after the bulk insert operation and write the elapsed time to the console. This will help you see how fast the bulk insert operation is. Since you want to compare the bulk insert with a regular insert, you need to clear the database after the bulk insert. Create another using block with a new app DB context instance. Call ensure deleted to delete the existing database and ensure created to create a new one. This ensures that the database is empty for the next operation. And really make sure that you only do this in this test environment here and don't delete any database in production, obviously. So the next thing is to perform a regular insert using entity frameworks standard methods for comparison. Restart the stopwatch, create another using block with a new AppDB context instance, use the add range method to add your list of customers to the context, call save changes to persist these changes to the database, stop the stopwatch and write the elapsed time to the console. Now make sure to call this method at the beginning of our main method. All right, so as you can see, 
we kind of got to the same point now where we were at the beginning of this video when I was still showing you how quick this bulk insert extension really is. So you can probably imagine how this will look like once we run it, right? Let's try it out. And yes, just as expected, first of all, both ran perfectly fine with no problems whatsoever. However, one of them ran significantly slower than the other. While the standard method ran in around three seconds, the extension needed almost only half the time with less code needed to write and literally no additional work we get a huge improvement in performance already. And this is with a basic application like this here. Now imagine the difference when it comes to real world scenarios where thousands upon thousands of operations like these happen every day, every second. This difference becomes quickly prohibitive if a solution like this is not used. But wait, there is more. We won't be stopping here. There's many more situations where we can compare this extension against the standard way of doing it to see if this is truly something that will improve our situation. Like with the many options it gives us as well, let me explain. Similar to the previous method, define a new method named bulk insert with options in your program class. Inside this method, create another list of customer objects. Again, use a loop to populate this list with unique customer names. Start a stopwatch to measure the performance of the bulk insertion operation. Use a using block to create an instance of AppDB context. With this block, call the bulk insert method, but this time pass in a Lambda expressions to the options parameter. Here you can specify various options like column input expression to insert specific properties and insert keep identity to maintain identity values. Stop the stopwatch after the operation and output the elapsed time to the console. Looks good. Next we need the standard way so we have something to compare against. For that let's create a method that performs a similar operation using the built-in entity framework core methods. This method will be similar to bulk insert with options but instead of using the bulk insert method you'll use add range and save changes. Create a list of customers, start a stopwatch and use add range followed by save changes with a using block of app db context. Stop the stopwatch after saving changes and output the elapsed time. Make sense? All right, then let's get to testing right away. Make sure to go up again to the main method and call both methods and run to see the result. There we go. This time the difference is even more significant. We still have, however, one more test to run, so let's not waste any more time and get to it. Next, we'll demonstrate how to perform bulk operations with related entities. This is particularly useful when you have complex data models with relationships between entities. Create the bulk insert with related entities method. This method will insert both customer and order entities into the database. Create lists for both customer and order. Populate these lists with related data. Start a stopwatch and within a using block of AppDB context, use the bulk insert method to insert both lists into the database. Use the include graph option for the order list to handle the relationship. Stop the stopwatch and output the time. Nice. Okay, next we need the standard method. So for that, create the standard insert with related entities method. This method will perform a similar operation as bulk insert with related entities but using standard entity framework core methods. Populate the list of customer and order, start a stopwatch and use add range and save changes with a using block. Stop the stopwatch and output the time. This is going great. Let's make it now to the final run of this application. Finally, in your main method, call the final two methods to see the performance differences. And this will now run and show us everything we have built so far. Let's see how our final result looks like then. Run the app and let's see what we get. Yep, as we have seen already, huge performance improvements in bulk insertion, insertion with options, and now also with related entities. All across the board, we got major improvements. And if we look at the code, in every case, there is less code to add, it's more intuitive, and the only thing we had to do is install this extension here. And with that, I hope you have learned something new today. 
We have covered databases, entity framework core, and data insertion, both with the built-in methods, as well as the ZZZ project extension methods. I think we reached a pretty conclusive result here. So if you need some lightning fast data operations, you know what to do. And you should also know what to do if you reach this point in this video. Make sure to like the video if you like the content, share if you know anyone who may need this and comment us anything you want. Tell us a funny story that happened to you today or tell us what you want to see next. Subscribe now to not miss any of our future videos. And as always, happy coding.